welcome back to my channel. My name is Steph and this is Ordinary Plant Girl. If you are new here, thank you for clicking on this video. And if you are returning, thank you so much for spending more of your time with me. I do have quite a few plants that I need to repot. And it's funny because I actually made a list of the ones I needed to repot and everything that I have here is not on that list. Oh, well, two of them are. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you what I'm going to repot. Um, some of you will be surprised that a couple of these are still alive, but we're going to try and take care of them as best I can. So uh, for right now, for today, I have got to repot this Peperomia Hope. It actually doesn't look like it really needs to be repotted. Um, it probably doesn't. It, what I'll do is I'll, I'll check the roots and everything, but I would like to repot it just because. It's interesting because some of these leaves look really, really pale, and then some of the other ones kind of look darker. So I don't know, because I'm horrible with peperomias, I don't know if this is good or not. I mean, it does have new growth happening at the ends, so maybe I'm doing okay? I don't know. You know what? Maybe I'll wait. We're gonna leave this one for last and I'm gonna see if I actually want to repot it because I'm not seeing any real evidence that it needs to be repotted and I'm terrified that um, it doesn't need to be and that I'm gonna mess it up. So, okay, yeah. So what I did was I just tried to pull it out of the soil and the soil started to crumble right away. It is also very dry. I do have this tiny little Crassula falcata. So it is a form of a jade. And I just really like the growth pattern on this one. And actually, since I've got it, this little part right here, this little like new growth piece, which you can't see because it doesn't want to focus for me. There we go. That is actually really new. So. I'm gonna put this in some cactus soil and in a terracotta pot, to go along with my other jades, which so far, so good, have done the whole survival thing. Um, then I have this Christmas cactus that I wanted to repot a while ago, but it just, it started just blooming. And you can see that it's got tons of buds on it now. And the, the flowers are really pretty. They're like a salmon color. They're so pretty. And that was the reason why I got it was because of the color of the blooms, because I've had the ones that are like really, really bright pink and like red, but I had never had ones that were like a salmon color. So this one's ready to go off again. And I would just like to get it into something better because this, this soil is completely compact in here. And we can see the roots here. So that one should be okay. The question is, is what I'm going to put it in, which I will show you after. Um, the other one that I want to repot today just seriously needs some love and attention. And it is my Monstera subpanata. So me and this plant have been through it. Um, it I almost lost it. I've taken propagations of it and the propagations just don't, they take forever for one thing. I've still got a piece of this plant in my prop box. It was in moss for the longest time. It just finally started growing a new growth point. And I mean like maybe eight, nine months it's been in there. Um, and I just recently switched it to a perlite prop box. I. I'm trying that now instead of moss to see how that goes. So I'm hoping that it does better in there. But to propagate this it takes forever, for me anyway. So you can see how long and kind of leggy it is. What I would like to do is I would like to put it on a stake um, and just have it start to grow up it and get out of this Tim Hortons cup that it's been in. So that is what we are going to do today. Um, so like I said, I'm not going to do the Peperomia Hope, so I will put that one back after. I think it just needs more time to be situated. 
here and I actually got that from a mystery box from North Shore Tropicals that I had picked up. Okay, so I think what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna do the Christmas cactus. I'll change the angle in just a second. But my question is, what should I put it in? So I do have these like wall mounted baskets. Um, they're self watering. So I do have the wicks and everything. And I'm thinking that maybe it would look like really cute in there. Or I really do like these little T4U pots. I've got a lot of my plants in them and Hoyas. Um, but this is just a, f oh no. Well, you know what? The good thing about Christmas cactus is I can just pop this right back in there and it should be fine. But, um, or should it go in here? That's probably better actually, right? It is a five inch, five inch pot. And this is a four inch that it's in. So it actually makes sense that I should put it in there. Although this is also a five inch, it's just self watering and Christmas cactuses do like their water. So I actually, I think I'm gonna put it in here. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. So I've got my Aeroid mix and I'm going to, let's see, what does it say? Keep soil moist, soil must not stay too wet. Okay, so that'll be fine. So I've got my Aeroid mix that I'm just gonna use um, for this one. Oh, I need to change my angle. Hang on one sec. So now you can see my little makeshift workspace that I've got going on here. Um, I'm still waiting. Well, I can't even say waiting anymore. Now I'm to the point where I'm actually trying to help my landlord um, evict the tenants from the house that I am looking to rent from him. So right now I live with a roommate and many of you know I had to switch spaces from a larger space to a smaller one because he's currently starting a family and kind of has a makeshift family going on now and um, so my la my landlord, my roommate has currently just, you know, kind of started putting a family together. Um, he's expecting a baby and moving into the space that I'm in now has been a bit of an adjustment for me because even though we do have our shared spaces, um, well, the kitchen and the living room used to be shared now so much not the living room, but that's that's fine because I didn't really use the living room when I was upstairs anyway. Um, but now that the kitchen as well, you know, with, with a family, it's a little bit harder for me to have the freedom to do the things I want to do um, up there. And that has resulted in, I do have to say, a lot of takeout. Um, but that's, that's a, a me thing, not a them thing. But you know, it's just, I, I want my own space. I want my own kitchen. Um, I've actually thought about just having the space of my own because I can afford it on my own. Um, one of the things about where I live is it is really expensive to live on your own. Um, if you're not part of a two and I mean two good income family or you don't have roommates, it's really hard to find affordable housing here. And if you have pets like I do, um, I've got my dog. I mean, it's really, really hard to find a place where you can have a dog or even a cat in some areas. I mean, I've even seen ads where they don't even want you to have, you know, things, the things in cages. Um, you're just like, it's just like no pets all the way around. Um, and that is horrible. And then the amount that we have to pay for rent now, ever since COVID, um, 
The housing market has just been absolutely insane. Like even my landlord is renting out his house. He bought a condo that he wants to move into. So he's got a two story, two story house, uh, two separate suites, one up, one down. And he is trying to charge $4,500 for the upstairs and $3,500 for a two bedroom downstairs. That's way too much. And as, as nice as the house is, it's not worth that. And my biggest, my biggest issue is why would I pay that much money? I might as well be able to get a mortgage. If I'm paying $4,500 a month for a three bedroom main floor, I, I mean, a, a mortgage would definitely be cheaper for sure. Um, so the thing is though, is that he does have multiple properties in the area. Um, he also helps manage other properties for um, people that are like overseas. And don't even get me started on that, but my landlord is a good landlord. And he has a house that is affordable that I can afford on my own. Um, I've already been living in this house for three and a half years. So he knows me. And the tenants that he has in there right now have not paid rent for the past three months. And you would be surprised at how the rights that renters have, which is not a bad thing. Like, don't get me wrong. I was, I was a renter. Well, I'm still a renter. Um, you know, I had been evicted from places for less when I couldn't afford to be there. I would get a 10 day notice and I would have to move. These tenants have had three notices. They say that they're disputing the notices, but if you're disputing a notice, there should be a hearing. I'm, I'm pretty sure with your tenancy branch. So, so far, there's no hearing. There is definitely a language barrier that I kind of think they're taking advantage of as well. And so now I have been asked to help get them out because their lease is about to run out and they're essentially going to be squatting on the property. How do I want this to sit? So, I am going to help my landlord as much as I possibly can because I do want this house. It's someplace where I can have my dog and my goats because I do have goats. I split them with the roommate. Um, and it would be nice if I could give him one less thing to worry about as, since he's got a baby coming. Uh, so I would really like to be able to do that. The lot is not as big as this one. I mean, the lot we're on right now is five acres and I think the, the other lot is two, maybe two, one and a half, two acres. I'm not exactly sure. And it's just down the street. So it's actually not even far away. I would still be in the same area, still have the same amenities. Um, you know, still live in the same town as my daughter and stuff so that's that's all good but the main thing is I know that it's going to be a definite work in progress because the rent is cheaper and judging by the people that live in there now I'm sure that it's going to be completely trashed by the time we get in there so it's going to be kind of a renovation project which I am actually very excited about too um, I would love to transform it into something better because that house has just had nothing but problems for, for years. And it would be nice to kind of change the stigma of the house. Okay. Oops. Hey, there we go. Well, it looks cute. I don't know where I'm going to hang it, but... I will hang it up somewhere, but I do. I think it's super cute. So that is my Christmas cactus. It's done. What to do? Oh, I forgot to put that piece in there. 
Okay, we're not quite done yet. So the cool thing is that this already has like a little bit of baby roots on it. Not that you can see because my camera doesn't want to focus. Anyway, um, we're just gonna tuck it right in the soil there. We'll give it a water and hopefully, hopefully it grows. Okay, so now that one's done. Okay, now my funky little jade guy. Okay, so I know what you're thinking. You are thinking, Steph, that pot is way too big for this tiny little jade. And you are probably right. But the truth of the matter is, is I don't have another terracotta pot that is small enough for this. So this is a five inch. Uh, so this is a five inch pot. This is a two inch pot. Three extra inches is probably a bit too much. Probably, but I have no choice, guys. I have no choice. Um, now it will be in cactus soil and I hope that that is gonna be enough for it. I actually, I'm really surprised that I don't have a two, or not a two, um, a four inch terracotta pot. I don't want it to, but I also want it to be able to sit in here for like a really long period of time. You know what? I, okay, I'm gonna just stop procrastinating. We're just, we're just doing it. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm just gonna do it. I hope, I hope it survives. I really, really do. But I just, I just can't. And so I've got my cactus soil here. Uh, do I have something to scoop you out with? No, I don't really need to. Now I'm hoping that, you know, because it's cactus soil, we're gonna have a little bit of a better shot here. That is a lot of soil. Um, but it's, I just, I can't, I can't. Um, it was $6.99 for this little guy. And uh, here's its tiny little, you can't even see the roots. But we're, we're doing it, we're just doing it. Um, I actually think it's gonna look nice in there once it fills out a little more. Um, once I find out, I, mean, I think that you can probably still propagate it the same way as you can like any other jade. So, I mean, we're gonna give it a shot and see how that works. I mean, maybe I can just fill up the pot a little bit more and make this um, pot size kind of justifiable, which I doubt because roots tend to be pretty shallow um, and they take I mean for jades it takes a long time for them to fill up their in their pots to me anyway I find that it takes them a long time to do that so here's fingers crossed here's praying that uh, This one will be okay. Because it is, it's pretty funky looking. I really like it. I really like it. I can't wait to see how it, how it like continues to grow and stuff. But okay, so there is the Crassulata falcata. And you can go down here. Okay, so now I have got my Monstera subpanata. Um, 
so this one has been in this cup for a really long period of time but I still don't see like a lot a lot of roots for the amount of time it's been in here and that's that's okay it's seriously top heavy um, I think I'm gonna put it in a seven inch just so I can put a stake in there as well so I've got my seven inch pot. So here is the cedar steak that I'm going to be putting it on. This actually did have my um, philodendron fuzzy petiole on it, but we're, we're having issues with the fuzzy petiole. Um, something we'll have to go through at a later date. But yeah, so we're going to, when did I get this? August 12th, 2021. So I've had it just over a year and it has definitely grown it's lost a couple of leaves along the way and i mean i could just air layer it and then cut this portion off and hope that something else happens through here but you know what i'm not going to worry about that right now because i would just really like to get it in something a little bit more suitable i am horrible with moss poles absolutely horrible um moss poles are not my thing i went through a period of time where i was really really good at keeping them moist no oh, keeping them mo moist and stuff moist but um that ended quickly okay so i'm gonna see what the roots look like here before i put it in there i think it's gonna be much happier in though in there though i i have to say and i am going to because there's perlite at the bottom of this i'm gonna put the perlite right in there okay so we're not not too bad, a little dry. Oh, I see. Okay, I thought I saw dry roots, but I don't. There's just, there's still some moss on these roots. And I don't want to disturb it too much. But okay, yeah, the roots do look good. Okay, yeah, okay, I'm, I was pleasantly surprised with that for sure I'm gonna put okay now here here is going to be the thing so I'm gonna have to turn it this way in order for it to sit I'll, oh sit along there okay um, okay 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 so no stay put stay stay to stay okay it's actually not too bad I did notice that it was drying out quite a bit but even so the root system was not that big so big enough and yes again I'm putting it in a pot that is probably too big for it but you know what my aeroid mix is airy enough that um, this should not be a problem. The problem I do have though is that I didn't grab my plant Velcro before I did this. So, so I'm going to have to Get you in there. Okay, now what I need is for you to sit there for a second while I get my plant velcro. But while I was sick, my poor plants became very, very, very neglected. Um, 
So many things were so dry. <laughs> I was surprised they were even still alive. It was just, it was crazy. And even though I didn't feel overly bad until I started to get better, um, I still did not have the energy for plant chores. Like, at all. Oh, I didn't even need a piece this big. So it's so much easier for me to um, spray down the stakes. It doesn't take as much water as it does for moss poles, and I think that that's why I'm better at doing this. Like, um, I'll have to give you updates on my Epipremnum panatum, which has attached to the cedar stake, and it just, I don't have to do anything with that plant. It just it does its own thing. I just missed the, um, the stake every once in a while. And I don't even really have to do that at all. Okay. Okay, you are in. Just gonna put another another one just to keep it flush up against it. And I mean, maybe that's what this plant needed the whole time. Um, we're gonna see how that works. So some of you have been asking for a Hoya update and I am going to do that for you as well with a Hoya update and my alocasia update. And that's kind of why I decided to do it and do the updates based on the genus of plants um, instead of just kind of doing everything. All right. Uh, let's see, I'm going to pan you up so that you can see this. Okay, so here is my Monstera subpanata. And she's actually looking pretty good. I'm happy with it. I am very happy with it. So it should <laughs> be able to live in here for... A while anyway and yeah I'll probably as we start to grow off the top I will start air layering it and probably filling up the bottom because that seems to be what it is that I'm doing these days is I'm just I'm, I'm filling plants I've done it with so many now those are more updates that you guys will have coming to you can't even see me because there's a plant in the way um, so for now I think that is going to be it. That being said, I hope you are all safe and well. Please like and consider subscribing to my channel, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!